Hi everyone! I'm so excited to share my hat with you. <laughs> Tonight I made a hat. Well, I didn't make the hat. I embellished a hat. Can you tell what style it's in? This is a steampunk art, steampunk art hat, and I made it at a local art center tonight. Can't wait to share it with you and tell you all about it. Thanks for subscribing to Creative Solace Studios for more mixed media art tutorials, and I'll link a couple of my recent art tutorials in the description of this video as well. Come on, let's take a look at this fun steampunk hat. Before I give you a tour of this incredible steampunk hat that I made, I have to give a shout out to the Tempe Center for the Arts. Check out your local art centers. You never know what kind of awesome creative activities they might have for you. Tempe Center for the Arts has art, music, theater. Check out their website that I'll link in the description for more information. This was a free project session that they offered. Our friend invited us there, my husband Stan and I met her, and we had a blast. So what we'll do in this video is take a look at the steps on how to make this and leave a comment. Let me know if you were making a steampunk hat, what would you put on it? Also at the end of this video, I'll share the nice alternative option that they had when they ran out of the free hats. They had an alternative project planned for people. So this was a great make and take steampunk art hat making activity and it was so much fun. First of all, what is steampunk? Steampunk is kind of industrial revolution, clocks, gears, machinery, factories that are powered by steam. It is a futuristic look, science fiction-y. Think maybe Jules Verne, think Leonardo da Vinci with his scientific illustrations, flying machines, mechanical things, things that they thought might be able to be invented and be possible. So steampunk hats. The first step when we got to the art center was to choose the hat, the base itself. You know, when I heard free, I thought, are these gonna be paper hats? What, what is this gonna be? But look at this cool hat. I chose the top hat version. It is a little bit more straight up on the side, which did make things somewhat more easy to glue onto. My husband Stan chose the derby version, which is a cool design, also a little bit more rounded and shorter, so he did mention that it looked like I might have a little bit easier time gluing things on, but his looks outstanding too, so much fun. In fact, let's take a look at my husband's hat too. So fun, absolutely love it. Stouter, rounder on the sides, and he did some really cool techniques on his creation as well. The charms on the goggles, the bright bold word on the front, as well as the back. And then I really love, he took this cord and strung a buckle on it in the front here, tied it onto each side. So he's got this extra cording going around, couple feathers, just love that we did this together and that he made a really awesome design as well. I'll show you some pictures of us both wearing our hats later on in this video. After choosing our hat, they had different stations set up like an assembly line and we chose different embellishments for the hat itself. First up, goggles. Oh, don't you just love these? I couldn't believe how cool these are. This is on a band and it really helps the ribbon to be held in place. Plastic goggles. The other option is they have little John Lennon style sunglasses that could be used also. The next bin was a cup of the charm embellishments the gears, the watch pieces, the wooden buttons, little decorative elements in a cup. Each one was unique, so you felt like you were really customizing, choosing your own project, your own supplies. There were some cards with words on, feathers. I mentioned the trim or the band, this maroon decorative flocked ribbon that's underneath here. They also had some thin, strips of lacing, kind of like a, 
I don't know if it was faux leather or leather uh, lacing that you could tie around or string some things onto, as well as some brown paint that you could antique the edges of your hat or any of the other pieces with. The instructions were to go down the assembly line, put the different goodies into your hat as you carried it along, and bring it to your table. Other than that, it was a self-directed activity. Members of the community sitting together, mingling, chatting, and assembling these. I was tempted beforehand because <laughs> I didn't know what they were going to have to bring my own glue. I thought, I need E6000 if it's going to be heavy things. That's what I'd recommend if you're doing this on your own, Gorilla Glue or E6000. But you know what they had? They had tacky, tacky craft glue. And these keys, these gears, these heavy pieces, they were, it worked. That was definitely a, an option. The next step after getting back to your table would be to plan out some things and figure out what you wanted for the band around as well as the goggles. The technique that I decided on, and there's no certain way, I'm just sharing what I did here, was that I wanted to leave some black space on the hat in between some groupings of featured elements. So this gives your eye a little break and a little break here to see a cluster of gears, buttons, trinkets, and then a break. You could do something patterned out evenly. My husband glued things on the goggles themselves. That looked cool. People had things sticking way up off the top. A ribbon in a bow or a knot hanging down. There were little monocles, little one lens eye spectacles that could either be on here or some people had them hanging down like they could put that up to their eye. Just so much fun to have different choices. I didn't plan everything out ahead of time. I did some little groupings and then I kept my hat in one direction so the glue could adhere, get tacky enough to turn it. Glue could be applied directly onto items or it could be squeezed onto a plate and applied with a craft stick. Let's take a look at a video clip that I took while attaching a gear to the front of the hat. You can see that with the tacky glue, I didn't have to hold the metal piece in place too long and it bonds securely to the fuzzy felt hat. I did try overlapping some metal pieces and it was harder to glue on that way. So for the most part, the pieces are glued down flat. I did some overlapping with the feather and the card though, tucked that actually inside the ribbon, inside the band there. And it's almost like the embellishments are having conversations with each other. This is a little conversation pit right here, a little corner where these three are hanging out and interacting with each other. Over here, they've gathered into a conversation and a congregation. Look how cute, this is like a little watch band. So many fun options that you could do on this if you're making it on your own. It was super easy. It was basically choose your supplies, sit down, arrange glue, and have fun. This steampunk art, steampunk hat was so fun to create, so fun to take pictures of afterwards. What would you put on it if you were doing this with your friends, with your family, by yourself? Or if you're just drawing a picture or painting a picture of a steampunk hat, what would you include on it? Leave some ideas in the comments and share. Also, let us know what your local art communities or art centers have available. Check out Tempe Center for the Arts website and thanks for touring this steampunk craft, steampunk art, steampunk hat, ex exciting steampunk idea with me today. And what the Tempe Center for the Arts did when they ran out of hats to give to people is they had miniature hats. How cute is that? Maybe three inches tall? And they were decorated as well. Some people even said that they might hang them as ornaments. Great community art making experience. Thank you Tempe Center for the Arts. For this steampunk hat making experience.